Man, <clears throat> I don't know about you guys, so I could just sit there and listen to that awesome music. Just kick through the day, right? Let's turn that back up for a minute. Man, that gets me excited for Thanksgiving, uh, for all the awesome stuff coming up. And I figured it feels like a Friday to me uh, because I'm off tomorrow and won't be around much on Friday either. Uh, so it feels like uh, feels like a weekend, feels like a Friday coming up, which is really, really cool on a Tuesday, right? Isn't it Tuesday? It's hard to believe. I think it's Tuesday. I don't even know. Man, we're going to be talking about some fun stuff today. We're going to be talking about this epic uh, crypto meltdown that's been happening. Um, and uh, man, it's really good to be back with you guys again. I have been um, totally off pretty much YouTube pretty, pretty hard. Um, and I will do that here and there. I've, I've always said on my channel that um, I am not a full-time YouTuber, don't want to be a full-time YouTuber, uh, don't ever have plans to be a full-time YouTuber. Um, if you are one of those people, no hate, it's just not for me. And so sometimes I just, uh, I, I don't have time for it, right? We only have 24 hours in the day and uh, there's only so many things that you can do with that day. And um, so from my perspective, there are just times in life where I've got to take a, that's got to take a huge backseat. So uh, I am glad to be back a little bit here and we'll make time for it. So what have I been doing? Uh, maybe I should talk about that a little bit. Um, let me show you what I've been up to. So I created a new company. Um, those of you that don't know me very well, I'm a software entrepreneur and love um, building awesome stuff and, and solving problems for people. So um, if you don't know um, what I've been doing, I, I started a company called Empath Cyber. It's empathcyber.com. And uh, really, really exciting. Here's a, a quick sneak peek of it. This is for cybersecurity people that are wanting to up their game in security. It's a private platform um, that uh, is really, really cool. It starts at $75 a month. For many people on YouTube, this is not for you. And I totally understand that. But I just wanted to let you know why I went in a dark hole and I disappeared for so long. I've been building this really amazing platform. Um, and and uh, if you want to know more about it, just sign up, empathcyber.com. It's, uh, I'll pop this in for you, empathcyber.com com like this. Um, you can jump into my email list if you want to know more about what we're building um, and why this thing is, is super awesome. But it's all about cybersecurity training. And if you are one of those people and you need some training, you need to up your game, um, reach out to me. I'm definitely not here to pitch that today, but I did want to share where I've been at. All right. So now that I've done that, I want to know what you guys have been up to. Uh, jump in here. Let me get this um, off here. Get that away. And I don't like that background. Let's get rid of that background real quick. Give me a second here. Let's just go to something generic. There we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So love to know what you guys are up to, man. I got a whole bunch of you on the stream today. Want to know how your day is going? Where are you connecting in from today? Uh, and uh, let me know what's what's up in your world. Adam Farnsworth, I saw you on there. What's going on, my friend? Uh, thanks for watching me while working. Uh, you're good people. It's been too long since I've um, been around you. Um, but, uh, glad, glad to see you on the live stream as well, John, um, anywhere, Adam, sorry, Adam, uh, and, and, uh, John, I see you on there long time. No here. Yeah. I've been off for a bit. Um, I was just talking about that, started a new company and been busy with that. And, uh, sometimes that goes, um, my, my YouTube time just takes a nosedive and that's okay. Also got LinkedIn as well. So if you're connecting in from LinkedIn, uh, reach out, say hi, Mindy Green. What's up, my friend? I know Mindy personally, good friend of mine, um, good people. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us today. So we're going to talk a lot about this crypto contagion or a crypto meltdown or a crypto winter. These are all like crazy terms that the press loves to come up with, I guess, mostly because they catch people's eye, like a crypto contagion, you know, past, you know, in a post COVID era, like, what does that mean? Does that mean like, you know, something's happening there? And uh, I just, I love, I love the terms, uh, but we're definitely seeing meltdown after meltdown after meltdown. And we're not going to see an end to that anytime soon. So we're going to talk about what's going on with it, my thoughts on it. I'd love to get your thoughts on all of this. And then if I have some time for questions towards the end, you know, we will get to those as well. And also, we're going to tie in some cybersecurity stuff to this, too, because everyone loves talking about both of those, right? Okay, so um, taking a look at the market for just a minute, um, take a peek at this. This is some interesting stuff that, that's here. Let me pop chat away so we can get a better screen. Here we go. So taking a look at the market, I mean, it's not doing great. It did recover. Bitcoin recovered off its like uh, like high 15,000s. Um, so it's not doing great in terms of, of price. Um, is now a good time to buy crypto? Um, let me just say, if you're asking that question, you don't ask that question. <laughs> Literally don't ask anybody, especially YouTubers. Hey, should I buy crypto? Is now a good time to buy it? 
All crypto YouTubers do is steer you wrong. All crypto YouTubers do is tell you where to put the money in, where they think that they're probably being paid on the back end. We're going to talk about that in just a minute on the live stream too. Never listen to crypto YouTubers. They have no idea what they're talking about. I've covered that. You can go back into my channel, some of my most recent ones. You even see people like BitBoy Crypto and some others that have, uh, it's been clearly called out that they've covered scams and they promoted those scams. Now, I don't think they knew that they were scams. I'm not saying they were complicit in them. But man, when you take a bunch of money from people to promote something, you better do your diligence. And this is why on my channel, I really just don't take sponsors anymore. And if I do take a sponsor and I'm open to that, but it's probably not going to be a crypto sponsor unless it's somebody I've really, really, really vetted because there's too much danger in all of that. And I know I talk about that a lot, but like, please stop listening to crypto YouTubers on like what to like what cryptos to buy or when to buy and when to sell. Like it's just not it's uh, it's not smart. It's uh, it's. It's just not smart. Okay, so going back to this, is now a good time to buy? Don't ask me. Don't ask any other YouTuber that's out there either. Uh, we, we definitely uh, just don't know. Now, I will say, my opinion is um, we still have more bad things to happen before we see a recover in the a recovery in the market. Um, you know, one thing leads to another, especially with crypto. You know, being a, a, a still a relatively small industry in the sense of like, you know, man, you got companies like Apple and Google that have a larger market cap than all of crypto combined, right? So crypto is still small and young and new. Um, and so because of that, I, I still think there's a lot of tie in to what's happening in the market where one thing leads to another thing leads to another thing um, that that it's a domino effect. Right. And I don't think those dominoes are done falling quite yet. So uh, just keep that in mind. So I want to talk about some of the things that are happening uh, right now around us and. Um, uh, and let's kind of let's kind of take a look at this. So so Vince in chat, um, no, I have not seen Bit uh, Bitboy is going after FTX and Kevin O'Leary. So um, he loves to run his mouth. Bitboy does, um, and that's okay, right? It's his prerogative, right? I'd love to see. Here's here's a little lesson he's going to learn though. Um, never go after billionaires like Kevin O'Leary. Um, it's probably not going to work out really well. I'm no fan of Kevin. Actually, I do like Kevin. I follow him online uh, quite a bit and used to watch Shark, Shark Tank. But I'm not friends with Kevin. I don't know Kevin. Um, but but BitBoy is a tiny, he's like this. And Kevin O'Leary is like way, 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 way bigger. Um, I will just say this, uh, that will not end well. Um, he will get out lawyered. Uh, so I don't know what the lawsuit's about, but probably not a, a, a good uh, a, a good uh, a good start to uh, to his journey there. I just wouldn't recommend that. Um, Connor Swalm, uh, thanks for joining. Um, appreciate the uh, thank. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. See you in in chat. Um, okay, so let's talk about a little bit more with FTX because uh, dude, <laughs> dude like colossal meltdown with FTX, right? Have you guys been watching this? Um, this is one that I've been looking at from the sidelines a little bit. And let me tell you, um, wow, I, I didn't see this coming, right? And I don't think, I think it's fair for pretty much everybody to say, we didn't see this FTX thing. Most people had no idea that this was happening. Um, you know, it's amazing to see SBF, Sam Bankman Free, like everyone looked at him like the like the next Elon Musk, right? Or like the next um, you know, huge innovator like uh, Steve Jobs. Like, and you even see like some of the VCs that were writing about him. And I don't have any of those articles up, but like, you know, talking about um, you know, whoa, look at look at look at all this, um, you know, look at all this uh um uh the this stuff that he's he like look how brilliant he is, look how smart he is, look how sharp he is. Uh, what an innovator. And then you find out, you start reading article after article and you just like, you cringe, like it's cringeworthy what was going on at FTX and with SBF in particular. And I don't know if you guys saw that one news article that came out. It was uh, the, the same guy that oversaw the Enron collapse. Now, a lot of you people probably watching this are too young to remember Enron. Connor Swalm, you're probably one of those. You probably weren't even born when Enron was around and fell. Uh, but the same CEO that oversaw the aftermath of Enron through its bankruptcy also saw is is overseeing FTX. And he made this comment like, I've never seen anything this bad ever. This is completely unprecedented. And I'm like, dude, that would mean something from coming from somebody like me, but it means something way more <laughs> when it comes from the guy that oversaw FTX, right? Just crazy to me. So the story is you're just continuing to come out and, and they're just staggering for us. And it's not good for crypto in the short term. But let me tell you this, I actually think 
it's really good for crypto. I mean, really good for crypto in the long term. This is why uh, these things don't scare me. I can't wait for the Thanksgiving conversations tomorrow around all of this. Um, I think we need to have FUD washed out. I think we need to have corruption washed out. And these are the kinds of elements where that's happening, right? And and this is going to be good for crypto. If you look at all of the big crypto failures that have happened through the years, usually there's a cleansing that comes with it. And I'm a big fan of that. And I'm super excited to see the advantages that come out of that, right? I think that's really, really good news. So um, let's take a look. Right, en- enough intro. Let's let's take a look here. Let me flip chat off so we can get back to uh, seeing everything here. Okay, so <laughs> FTX was run as a personal fiefdom. Faces hacks, hacks. So that kind of shocked me for a minute. We'll talk about that when we get some time for it. Missing assets. <laughs> it's like, okay, I get like maybe a million off the balance sheet, like you know whatever when you're a company worth billions. Uh, but this gets really bad. There's just so much to this. Um, okay, personal fiefdom of former SBF. Uh, attorneys for the Collapse Crypto Exchange said in its first bankruptcy hearing, so they just had their first hearing. Attorneys are, are definitely sinking their teeth into this. This is like a Super Bowl for attorneys, right? Like these are like, you know, because it's high, high profiles you see here. I mean, this is like everyone's, all these lawyers are sinking their teeth into this one, right? Um, uh, Six billion. So after traders pulled six billion from the platform in three days and rival exchange Binance abandoned a rescue deal. So that we, we saw what was happening there. FTX was uh, their, their own token. Um, there was some purchase uh, decisions and some thoughts going on that was happening between Binance and FTX. Binance decided they, they pull out and they sold all of their tokens. So they flash sailed it, crashed FTX. And then of course the dominoes were already falling, but it was like one of the last ones that was, that was out there. Right. So Pretty crazy, um, pretty crazy for sure. Um, but this thing just gets even more wild. Let me let me get into this a little bit more. I'll find a couple things here um, that I th- I thought were pretty shocking. Um, attorney said the firm had been run as a personal fiefdom of SBF with three hundred million dollars spent on real estate such as homes and vacation properties for senior staff. So like, dudes literally buying for people their own homes. Dudes like, hey, you know all this awesome stuff we got here. Like, I'm just buying it for you. Like, I'm your crypto daddy. If you want a new house, I got you three hundred billion dollar or 300 million dollars worth. I mean, just bonkerville. It's just bonkersville to see this happening. I, I just, I can't think of another company that spent 300 million dollars of their own money buying properties for senior staff. But you know, if you if you know of any, let me know because I'm in the market for working for a place that wants to buy me my own next two million dollar home. That sounds great. <laughs> like, and I don't know what's going to happen to that, right? Like, are these people going to lose their homes? Are they going to be like crypto homeless? I mean, they're they're probably rich enough on their own, but like, uh, it's just wild. It just, uh, you can't make this stuff up, right? So article goes on. Uh, let's see, um, led the blah, blah, blah. Let's see what else. Oh yeah. So now of course, um, regulators are entering into the circle. N- no shock, right? Um, Reuters rep- rep- early reported, um, FT, uh, yeah, FTX, his parents, his parents, <laughs> his parents, it just... You can't make this up. Uh, and senior executives of the failed exchange brought, bought at least 19 properties worth $121 million in the Bahamas. Uh, pretty wild. Um, and then attorneys also said, I think this makes sense. Attorneys also said an investigation must take place. I mean, I guess they're asking for one about Binance's sale of FTX in July 2021. Like, why did they sell? And did they see some crazy things that were happening once they got access to the books? Um, or did they ever get access to the books? Right. But what happened with that? You know, and why did they sell their share and why did they not report why? Right. There's some some unknowns that are there. Right. Separately, a filing late on Monday by Ed Mosley. I don't know Ed Mosley. Uh, consulting firm advising FTX showed FTX's cash balance of one point two four billion, substantially higher, um, which that that was good for sure. Right. And then we uh, we get into here we go. This is what I was also looking for. Right. FTX's fall from grace has sent shivers through the crypto world, driving Bitcoin to its lowest level in around two years. Again, you know, we just started the live stream with like crypto winter, crypto contagion, crypto, you know, bear market and all these kind of terms that we use, right? Like uh, just to, to, to get the hype cycle going, right? Um, but pretty amazing to see all of this stuff that was happening here, right? Uh, and then, of course, um, some more things that are going to come out of FTX, right? Um, we know that FTX um, was involved in Almeda. Um, they're, they're like, uh, their mining, I think, is or their exchange it was. And of course, that that's that that's not going well. So there's, there's going to be a lot of fall down from FTX. 
And FTX itself was a fall down from previous things that happened. And if you don't remember, a lot of this stuff all happened way back when we saw the collapse of, of Terra and Luna, right? That uh, algorithmic stable coin with Do Kwan. And that was the kickoff to a whole bunch of these things all kind of falling down like crazy. Um, and so I don't think we're at the end of it, right? If you're watching like one of those big domino, you know, things on YouTube where these people do these crazy like domino things, we're still in the middle of it, I feel like, right? We, we're, we're, we're still in a cleansing. There's still a lot of greed in the market. There's still a lot of people that were doing some shady stuff. And here's the funny thing about shady stuff. When shady stuff happens, you get what you have coming to you, right? Like there's just no way to stop that. Uh, just no way to stop that. So, uh, yeah, wow. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna see more of, of all of this. So let's, let's keep going. So more news, right? And I guess today is just a bad news day, but though, didn't they say bad news sells? Isn't that what everyone always says? So this is an interesting one, uh, from CNBC that just came in. I thought this was pretty, pretty interesting as well. Let me flip chat back on so I can see you find people talking. I'm not able to pay attention to what you guys are saying in chat while I'm talking. Uh, so if anyone's been trying to DM me or ask me a question, uh, don't give up on me. I'll get to questions towards the end of the live stream today. Um, this this was, this was interesting. New York governor signs first of its kind law cracking down on Bitcoin mining. Here's what's happening. They basically said, look, we're not going to stop current mining in, uh, in New York. If you're, if you're a Bitcoin miner, those of you that don't know, Bitcoin mining is extremely expensive in terms of electricity costs. Now, you know, we, we many people will say from a true economics point of view, if we have a lot of Bitcoin mining and it's worth Bitcoin's worth so much, it's actually not all that expensive for the value it generates, right? Now, I'm not here to argue that point, but what I am saying is um, it's kind of interesting in the sense of um, New York is kind of taking a stand here and they're saying, hey, look, we're done. We're not allowing no, no more new Bitcoin mining in New York unless, unless it is done with clean energy renewables. So I guess like wind and like hydroelectric, I don't even know what all options New York has for like clean renewable energy. I'm not sure, but I guess things like nuclear, things like, you know, gas, oil, uh, coal, uh, all of those kinds of things are no notes. Right. And so what they're saying is they're not, they're not, so, so they're not saying no, no, like they're not stopping Bitcoin mining. If you already have a mining company in New York, they're not saying we're, we're shutting it down. We're just saying, A, you can't expand it. And B, you can't add like a new companies cannot come in unless it's certified clean. I, it's interesting, right? You know, it's the first of its kind in the country, said the the mayor. Um, Hochul, Hochul, Hochul. I don't know. I, I live in Florida. No idea who that person is, but that's the mayor. Uh, so, you know, I think that's interesting. I think I think um, now is the time for this stuff to happen, right? Now is the time for if you're going to see laws get passed around crypto, now is the time that regulators will sink their teeth into it because they know that there's a political price to pay on both sides of any aisle. This is the problem of being a politician across the board is no matter what, you're going to have constituents that like what you do and you're going to have enemies that don't. And so the best time to make crypto regulations and new new changes at the national level or at the state level is when crypto is not doing well, right? Because then they're going to be like, see, this is why we're doing X, Y, and Z. Look how bad this is. And so it's part of their message. It's part of their ammunition to be able to use this. So don't be shocked when we see more and more stuff come down the pipeline from SEC, from FinCEN, from Treasury Department, from state regulators across the board around crypto. We're going to see more and more and more around it. Um, Adam uh, says, the engineering company I work for actually um, had set up Bitcoin mining in a hydro dam that was producing excess energy. Yes. And so I see that a lot. I know some people that that's exactly what they're doing. You have, because a lot of renewable is based upon like, you know, how, like how much wind is coming through, you know, how much water we have flowing. We have excess, we have periods of excess. And so that, that is, what do we do with the excess, Right. And that's exactly what I'm seeing as well. Some of those companies are saying only the excess will mine with. When we have excess, it, it, you know, wind is going crazy and the, the turbines are going like crazy on the wind farms. We got excess. Let's mine with it. Right. It makes sense. Right. You do something with the energy. Yeah. Totally. Totally understand that. Right. Um, so getting back to this whole like uh, crypto regulation thing, we're going to see more of it come in. And, and I don't think there's anything we can do to stop it. And, and I don't, I, let me even go so far as to say, I'm not even sure at this point that some of it's like bad, right? In the sense of like, look, 
the same things that are happening, like take, take Celsius, right? I covered Celsius a lot. I was a huge user with Celsius. I lost a lot of crypto with Celsius. That's why from the beginning, I would always tell you never, never, never invest what you're not willing to lose and never listen to YouTubers. I'm not telling anybody on my channel, go put money in with Celsius. I'm just reviewing it from my point of view. Well, the whole thing fell apart, right? Just like everything else did. Celsius was over leveraging. And you could argue that they were not disclosing how much they're over leveraging. Well, banks are not allowed to over leverage. They're actually, that is tightly controlled by banking regulators, at least here in the States. There are the loan loss ratios and how much you can actually lend out is, is very tightly regulated. Well, crypto has no such thing, right? So it's, it's amazing because the regulators are pointing their finger at this and saying, I told you so. The, this is why you need regulations is what they're saying because you're not responsible enough on your own. And if here's the question for crypto people. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to I'm just going to say it, right? <laughs> if if crypto is was was created as a backstop against the slimy corrupt financial ecosystem that exists, why is it doing the same things the very that the very system they're trying to fight against? also did. Like they're literally following in those footsteps. Now I know that it's not just like crypto as a whole that's doing it. It's maybe slimy people that are doing this, right? But that's my point, right? Like crypto was created. If you look at the ethos of what uh, uh, Satoshi wrote in the Bitcoin white paper and even citing the bank collapse in 2008, we're doing, we're following some of the same things. <laughs> Physician heal thyself. There's hypocrisy that's in it. And again, I know it's not Bitcoin or crypto's fault. It's the people that are doing these things. But that is going to be the very point of the regulators. They're going to come in and they're going to say, look, at the end of the day, we are going to have to regulate this because the same thing that happened to banks and why we regulate them is why crypto needs it. So just be ready for this, right? Don't be shocked by this. And let's hope that over time, this regulation um, signs off for better things to come. Now, speaking of better things to come, Time for the next piece that I have for you. Better things to come may not be happening for everybody. You know, we always say celebrities are always win, you know, like uh, that, you know, they always land on their feet. They always have the money. They always have the power. They always have the influence. They're always good. Well, you know, we'll see what's going to happen with this, but check this news article out. So this is over here from Yahoo Sports, but it's in a ton of, I saw this Wall Street Journal um, so it's in a bunch of other articles as well. So Tom Brady, Steph Curry, and others are facing scrutiny over FTX. That's interesting, right? So what's going on here? Well, uh, it, it's well known that FTX had sponsors, right? And we saw crypto.com. Remember Matt Damon, you know, and he took a lot of heat over his sponsorship there. So you, you got a lot of this that's happening right now. And um, Apparently, take a look at this. Uh, the director of enforcement for the Texas State Securities Board has announced the state regulators are investigating mobile celebrity endorsers tied to the FTX platform. The probe is an effort to determine whether securities laws were violated by Brady Curry and others while promoting FTX and cryptocurrency. How interesting is that, right? Let's talk about this. So there's nothing wrong with a celebrity endorsing something. This happens every single day, right? So if Tom Brady chooses to endorse some, I don't know, deodorant, whatever it is that he wants to endorse, he can do it, right? And he can make a lot of money for it. And he's earned that money because of his stature and his name and he's worth it. So what's wrong with endorsing crypto? Is there, is that different? Why is that a problem right now? Sure. Endorsing FTX probably wasn't great in the aftermath, but you know, Brady probably didn't know that FTX was like spending $300 million on their parents' homes and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> no. So, what's wrong with it? Well, let me tell you what's wrong with it. Let's go back to the article and let's see why these folks are in trouble. Now, do I think you're going to see Tom Brady get arrested? Of course not. Do I think you're going to see Tom Brady get fined and others? Probably, maybe, wouldn't shock me. There's precedent for this, right? So, so uh, it, it's just interesting to see what's happening here, right? So they've been co corresponding with securities regulators in other states, parallel investigations happening. So it's not just Texas, right? The expectation is there will likely be a comprehensive review by many regulators across the country, depending on what securities or consumer protections might apply in other states. Texas isn't likely to stand alone. No doubt about it, right? Um, asked 
whether state probes could be the first steps toward eventual federal securities investigation involving Brady and other endorsers, the source added, that's certainly not anything the, the state of Texas can influence because that's a national thing, right? But it's sensible that what is happening with FTX will occupy the attention of federal regulators at the appropriate time. So here's what's happening here. Um, failure to disclose when you are um, you're endorsing a crypto, right? Um, first of all, it could break securities laws, right? There's this thing called the Dewey test, it, and it's a lot of discussions over Adam. We'll see you later. Thanks for joining the, the, the live stream today. Um, there's a lot of discussion around um, this idea of um, how, how do we handle crypto? Is it a security? Is it not? Right. And if it's a security, the way that securities are promoted are highly regulated. You just can't go on and be like, I'm Tom Brady and I love FTX and you should buy the FTX token and you should use FTX. There's a lot of laws around how you disclose, what you disclose, who you disclose it to. These are really important things. See, see, securities themselves, the way the SEC regulates this stuff, it's very, very, very important that you follow the laws and the rules around all of this, right? It's really important that that's done. And so this apparently wasn't being done. So the article talks about this. And of course, in the aftermath of FTX falling down, what did I say earlier? I said, this is the chance for regulators to sink their teeth in. I would ask these same regulators, why are you only looking at what was happening with FTX now after the collapse? Why were you not doing anything before? They're like, well, we probably were doing something before. You don't, you just don't know that. Well, let's be honest. They're doing this because now they know they can't. When they, when the market falls down and everyone's hating on crypto, it's the perfect time for them to sink the regulator teeth in and regulators going to regulate. It's what they do. And so that's what's happening here. They're jumping into it. Now there is precedent for all of this and there is definitely room for danger. And if I'm Tom Brady, if I'm Steph Curry, I'd be having some conversations with my my legal counsel of like, how did you let me do this? <laughs> right. You, I, yeah, I made a lot of money. I'm sure like being an endorsement for FTX, but how could you have let me take on the securities risk? Wasn't it your job to like mitigate and make me aware of that? You know, you, you have to wonder this. And, and here's, here's what I want to show you. This is right from the horse's mouth. This is right from sec. Take a look at this sec charges Kim Kardashian, for unlawfully touting crypto security. Now, this is a while back. I forget when this was. There is October 2022. It's so not that far back, right? But we all know who Kim Kardashian is. Like this, I think most of us do. If you don't know who she is, do yourself a favor. Don't go. It's no need. Like she's not important, right? <laughs> Just don't. But most of you probably know who she is. Okay. So uh, she got in trouble for touting on social media, a crypto asset offered and sold by Ethereum Max. I don't even know what Ethereum Max is. Like, do we really even want to like Google this? Like, do we really? But yeah, we are. Ethereum Max. What the heck is Ethereum Max? It's smoky. All right. Now trading on Arbitum. All right. Uh, I don't even know what Ethereum Max is. It's like not Ethereum. It's the it's more maximum than Ethereum. Who knows? I'm not going to spend any time on this, but they probably gave an exorbitant amount of money to Kim Kardashian to cover this. And of course, because she has one of the largest social media followings ever, you know, it's going to make a difference, right? So she, she now uh, she agreed to settle the charges, pay 1.26 million in penalties, disgorgement and in interest and co cooperate with the commission's own ongoing investigation. In other words, she paid a bunch of money. And she said, sorry, and I'm not going to cover it anymore. And I'm pulling myself out of it. Right. So not prison time, nothing like that. But she got fined a fair amount of money. Oh, here it is. She, she was paid 250K to publish a post on her Instagram account about Emacs tokens. Right. And again, had she published something on her Instagram about some makeup, something or other, or some shoe or some vacation that she, whatever it was, that had been totally fine. But because it's a crypto, look at this. This case is a reminder that when celebrities or influencers endorse investment opportunities, bam, that's the key to work, including crypto asset securities. It doesn't mean that those investment products are a right fit for investors, said Gary Gensler, SEC chair. We encourage invest investors to consider an investment's potential risks and opportunities in light of their own financial goals. Have you seen those like commercials that you see for like stock exchanges? They, there's always you have the text at the bottom and the disclosures that are always saying things like that, like consult your own financial advisor, make sure that this is right for you. It's results, not typical, all these kinds of things. Things. They put those things there in, on purpose so that they are not in violation of the SEC touting rules. So this is my point is for Tom Brady, for Steph Curry, 
for a lot of these people, whether it's Bored Apes or it's FTX, any of these things that they are paid to promote, you better watch your back a little bit because the SEC now has an opportunity to really come after you. Um, so we'll see what happens with this. But I would not be shocked to see fines come through. I would not be at all. And, and, and Kim Kardashian is not the only one this has happened to. Let me show you this one as well. So here's another one right from the horse's mouth. So this is also from SEC. Two celebrities ch ch uh, charged. Floyd Mayweather and Khalid Khalid, known as DJ Khalid. They were also fined for touting, right? Against IC, uh, on this one in an ICO. So Khalid failed to disclose a $50,000 payment from Centratech. Don't even know who the heck that is. Uh, and when he posted to his Twitter followers, starts in a few hours, get yours before they sell out. I got mine. So if you're paid to promote, you don't tell anyone that you're paid to promote. You then promote that because it is an investment opportunity. That's touting. That's a no-no. So, uh, yeah. And then Mayweather did the same thing. You can call me Floyd Crypto Mayweather from now on. <laughs> Floyd Crypto. Yeah, that's that's definitely what everyone's going to call you, Floyd, is Floyd Crypto Mayweather. Yeah, that's that. that When I think Floyd Mayweather, I definitely think crypto, right? But definitely his name, right? Definitely, definitely Floyd Crypto Mayweather. He failed to disclose that he was paid 200K. So not only has Mr. Crypto Mayweather uh, been fined uh, a, a significant amount, this is way back in 2018, he also had a cease and desist. Let me see if I can find this here. Um, disgorgement, paid 300,000, 300,000 penalty, judgment interest. Uh, here it is. In addition, Mayweather agreed not to promote any securities digital otherwise for three years and Khalid similar banned for two years. So how'd that work out for you? Floyd crypto Mayweather. You can't even talk about crypto for three years. I'd love it if someone actually introduced him as Floyd crypto Mayweather. Hey, Floyd, tell us more about crypto. Just watch him go because <laughs> he literally can't talk about it. <laughs> I can't wait for the day when one of these crypto YouTubers, BitBoy or and Lark or one of these that do a lot of stuff who have been shown to take a lot of funds and tout when they get a C&D, when they get a cease and desist, what are they going to do when their livelihood is based on YouTube and promoting cryptos? I just wonder what's going to happen to those folks. It's that day might come and literally for three years, they can't talk crypto. They've been gagged on talking about crypto. That will be fun to me. Uh, epic meltdown. I guess they'll go to flipping burgers, you know, like, you know, sir, this is a Wendy's. Uh, can't talk about crypto here. Uh, who knows? But but yeah. So so there you have it. Right. Um, there's some trouble a brewing. And this is why I go back to this over and over and over. Never listen to crypto YouTubers on crypto. And if you are a crypto YouTuber and you're listening to this, I hope you're, sh you're, you're or a Twitter YouTuber or a TikToker, I don't care who you are, but if you're touting cryptos, it's fine for you to say, hey, I like this crypto. I'm a fan of it. This is cool. This is where I like about it. Totally fine. But the, where we draw the line is if you take sponsorship and are paid to cover and you fail to disclose that, you could have hot water coming your way. So if you are paid by a crypto uh, project. There's two things I think you got to keep in mind. One is disclose. Hey, I'm being, I'm being paid, right? I am being sponsored by them. Second thing is do your due diligence, right? Because your, your stature and your reputation could come falling down like a house of cards really quickly. If you are covering a crypto that falls apart. And this is why I just don't do it on my channel. I just don't, it's not worth it. Okay. One other piece of news I wanted to share. This one was interesting. Bankruptcy Council reveals more FTX news. FTX assets at risk of cyber attacks. Well, ain't that interesting, right? So this is an interesting one here um, because when I first thought, I'm like, wait, why would bankruptcy make them more prone to cyber attacks? Like are bad guys mad at them and going after them more? Like what would make them be any more or less of a, of a cyber attack victim target than like, how does, how does, how does this have anything to do with um, with with bankruptcy? Like, how do those two things go together at all? I don't I don't understand. Right. So so it, this one is an interesting one. Right. They, they talked about this a little bit. Um, they mentioned that apparently they'd already had a hack. And I was like, oh, I didn't know this. Well, how bad was it? So they, they mentioned this that Chainalysis reported on this. And so I went and found Chainalysis tweet. If you don't know Chainalysis, really cool blockchain company. They do a lot of analytics and blockchain. Um, I've covered this before on my channel. Crypto, especially Bitcoin, is not is not anonymous. The transactions are clear. Everyone can see them. So you can do a lot of tracing. 
And so they talked about this funds stolen from FTX are on the move and exchangers should be on high alert to freeze them if the attacker attempts to cash them out. I've also covered this as well on my channel of these big colossal mega crypto hacks and then how bad guys actually have trouble washing the funds. It's not like dollars, you know, where I can just like put it in a briefcase and go exchange it somewhere or like Breaking Bad, start my car wash and, you know, wash it that way. Crypto is much more difficult because we can actually flag the actual crypto. It's really interesting, right? I don't have time to talk about that today in the live stream, but that kind of non-fungibility is really, really interesting when it comes to financial crime. And also side note, why crypto or why governments are going at, going towards digital currency, because it gives them this tracking ability they've never had before. So that's topic for another day. Uh, but it's interesting, right? So, so they're tracking this. And so I didn't even know that FTX was hit by something that was a, that was new to me. Right. Um, but you can see right here, the, the Bitcoin, they bridged the, the, the Ethereum to Bitcoin so that they now have Bitcoin and they're going to try to use that to wash it and, and try to get the funds like anonymized so they can get access to them and clear. Um, so, and probably sell them for, you know, whatever their, their cash equivalent is and wherever that their, their attack was done. But I didn't know this, right. I, I had no idea that it happened. Maybe that was public news and just missed my radar. It's entirely possible. Um, but yeah, FTX is, you know, so, so now they're, they're concerned about this and I guess they're concerned like, or could there be more attacks that are going to happen? But my view as a cybersecurity practitioner is look, I don't actually think that they're any more susceptible to like, like attacks being more successful on them now, they might have more attention on them, but that's it. Right. So I don't, I don't see a correlation there. Uh, but man, things from FTX are just not good, right? They're just not good. A lot of bad things have, have happened from this, but FTX itself was in the middle of their, the middle of the dominoes, right? Others fell before that then affected FTX and FTX will affect more coming down the pipeline and a hack on top of it with stolen funds, just make things all the worse. So there you have it. There's the news. Um, what's good going on? Well, in the crypto space, nothing like literally nothing right now. And that is OK. Um, again, let me give you my glass half full in the middle of everything being bad. Um, it's good because it's washing. I mentioned this at the beginning of the stream. Clear stuff out. Gets rid of scummy people and scummy companies. Hopefully new companies will emerge and say, I'm not doing things the way they did it. It was nice to have a $300, $300 million mansion property, whatever in the Bahamas while it lasted. But man, SBF and his big old fro is potentially going to see who knows, maybe jail time, definitely fines. So things that started well didn't end well. And so hopefully new companies will rise from the ashes and say, I don't want to end. I, I do want to end well. I want to start well and end well. So let's not do this scummy stuff, right? So these things are good for crypto because it, it washes that out and gives us a better starting point. So I am by no means, um, you know, people, someone asked me this the other day, like, are you done with crypto now for everything that's happened? And I'm like, no, not at all. I'm still excited. Crypto is a technology. It's, it's not a, it's not a currency. It currency can be a piece of its technology, but what it's solving for, what it's doing is truly innovative and I see it. And so I'm excited about that. And so I have the ability to sort of like look and distinguish the, the, the scummy stuff happening that deserves to fall apart versus the purity of what like what crypto is doing as a whole is, is good. So these things are good as, as Silwex says, the great crypto reset. Yeah, it's a great way to say it. Indeed, it is a great crypto reset. So I'm excited for that. And, uh, but, but it should come with lessons for you as well. Never invest what you're willing to lose. Do your due diligence, not your keys, not your crypto. All of these things we've been talking about for years, I guess people are like, yeah, I hear it, but like, whatever, I'm just gonna, you know, go all in with Celsius. I'm going to go all in with FTX and then we see what happens and all your money's gone. Right. So, so these tried and true le lessons we've learned, um, boy, let's continue to take them to heart because, um, many people have, have really, really, really uh, had some, some roughness that's come with it. All right. So you have it. I'm going to stick around for some questions. Anyone have any questions for me? If you do, I've got the chat open. So it should just roll right into my screen. I've got LinkedIn up and I've got uh, YouTube up. So uh, if you guys have questions for me, let me know. I'd um, love to answer any questions. And well, I'm waiting for you to furiously fire one or two over my way. Um, I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving. Those of you that are not in the States, tomorrow is our national uh, holiday around Thanksgiving. So I'm excited about that. I hope that you and um, your uh, your friends and your loved ones have a great um, time with, with family and friends and, and just enjoy that time. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Um, so really looking forward to that and um, all the awesome stuff that goes with Thanksgiving. I think it really is my favorite holiday because there's no like agenda to it. It's just, let's have some great food and let's, uh, let's, let's meet up together with some friends and family. Right. And for me, I am, uh, we're smoking a Turkey, baby. Uh, I love smoking. I've got a smoker in my backyard 
And uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to go see our family and um, have a really good time with that. So looking forward to that. All right. I'm going to wait for another minute or two in case anyone has any questions. There's a whole bunch of you folks on the um, live stream. Okay. Any cool cryptos you're looking at? So Vince, good question. Um, This goes back to what I mentioned at the very beginning of the live stream because I started a new company, Empath. And if you're just joining us and you didn't see the beginning of that, um, I started this company right here, Empath Cyber. Um, Empath is um, a cybersecurity training platform, especially for IT folks, and uh, really helps them and their their employees really understand why cybersecurity matters. So I've been heads deep building this. And that's why I haven't done a lot of my YouTube. I'm not a full-time YouTuber. And so all of that to say, um, any new crypto, um, not really, actually, I'm the wrong person to ask at this point in time. I have not been in depth into it. I have one friend that was talking to me quite a bit um, about uh, one crypto. And again, just like I said at the beginning of this whole thing, right? Uh, I'm not, uh, let's see, coin, let's see if I can get back over to it. I'm not, I'm not, um, advertising. I'm not promoting. I'm not paying. Do what you want. Make your own choices. But I had one friend talking about uh, uh, about Hedera HBAR. And so I need to look into that one a lot. I'm really interested to see kind of what's happening with Hedera and why it is, um, why it's got the interest of a lot of people and it is growing. It's now the number 38 coin on coin market cap. So I'm interested in that one. But as a whole, um, I think the best thing for me to say is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really into a ton of cryptos right now. I'm just I'm building a company. So great, great, um, great question. Um, come, come ask me in another month or two. Um, but also keep in mind, not a lot of good projects that like to start in the, in the bottom of a hype cycle, right? When everything's just back to, to, to the worst, right? You see, there are probably good projects that are even on pause waiting for the market to come back up because it's tough to come out with a new company, a new project now when, when no one's got eyes on it, right? So now's the time to build. Now's the time to innovate. Now's the time to create. Now's the time to explore. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. There's not a lot that's like coming out right now just because of the news cycles. Taylor, thank you. Great to have you back, Wes. Um, could you give us an update on Pi? How close are we to open mainnet? Um, great question. Um, uh, here's what I can say. I actually don't know the answer. I did talk to the core team this week, believe it or not. Um, and uh, they, they don't have any updates for us on when um, open mainnet is coming. And the reason for that is, we just, they, they, they need to get through KYC. There's still a lot of people who have not gone through KYC. There needs to be more apps in the ecosystem or people like more robustness for Pi for people to be using it. And this is just my personal opinion. It's just my own personal opinion. Not the, nothing from the core team at all is um, keep in mind now it's a terrible time to release Pi, right? Like again, the bottom of a market is not a good time. So they're building right now. So I don't know how close we are to open mainnet. I, I, I think it's in my opinion, again, no facts on this. I think 2023 is likely, very likely that we'll get to open mainnet. If you don't know what Pi is, go watch them on my videos. If you don't know what open mainnet is, basically that's when they remove the firewalls or whatever on the APIs and everyone has, you have access to your your Pi now. Pi is real. You have access to it. The blockchain exists, but we don't have everyone KYC'd and you can only use Pi for like transactions um, in between users. You can't like buy and sell with it. There's no, Pi is not on exchanges, things like that. So I think 2023 is likely, but I don't know if it's going to be the first half of the year, or the second half of the year. If I had to guess, again, just no inside knowledge at all, none. I would guess later in in the year, you know, like June to June to December of next year. But just guess. I hope I'm wrong. Maybe it's even sooner. Do I think SPF will be trialed in the near future? I think it's likely. Right again, no knowledge on this. Um, not saying he is. I'm not attacking him. Uh, but I would say you you see the you know you see what's happening with Doquan in South Korea and um, you know revoked his ability to travel. If you see some things like that come up, where like he, he travels been revoked, passports been canceled, you know those are signals that there may be an indictment coming along for SBF. So um, could do I think an, a, an indictment might might happen? It's entirely in the realm of possibility. Silek, uh, definitely possible. Um, I, I'd be shaking in my boots if I were SBF, right? <laughs> for sure especially going from riches to rags. We always talk about rags to riches, not riches to rags. Just unbelievable story, right? Someday we're going to make some epic, epic documentaries on what happened with them. Just wild. Uh, Vince, there are two to look at. Bone by Shiba and Colt now both look like moonshots. All right, there you have it from Vince. I don't I don't know those two projects, but, um, you know, uh, take a look at them. Uh, so anyway, I don't know if anyone else has any questions, but hang out for just a couple more minutes. You guys do want to ask another question? Uh, but I, I think eventually, I don't think I know, eventually this will, this will finish. The last domino will fall. What that last domino will be in the crypto market, I do not know. Um, but it will fall. And when it falls, 
we will see the market kind of go silent and quiet for a bit, probably. And then we'll begin to see new things pick up and excitement come into the marketplace and hopefully some new projects doing some great things. And some of the stalwarts that hopefully are going to be unaffected will continue to grow. Um, you know, so far you have companies like Coinbase that, you know, so far seem to have no exposure to any of this. Let's hope that continues to be the case. Uh, boy, if you had a Coinbase, uh, you know, there's a, there was alleged rumors around what was happening with Gemini. Could they be affected from all this over leveraging? So far, none of the big boys, anything's happened to them. So let's hope it stays that way. All right, guys, I see no other questions coming in. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks for letting me jump back with you. I didn't disappear. Well, I did disappear, but I'm not, I didn't disappear forever. I just get busy with the things I get busy with, but it's been awesome hanging out with you guys. Hey, leave a like and subscribe. That really does go a long way. Um, small ask for me, but goes a really long way. And uh, if you guys have questions, make sure you hit me up until then, until next time, I will uh, talk to you guys later. Thanks so much. Let's get that music back again. Shouldn't we do that? I mean, it's the best way to end to celebrate Thanksgiving coming up. Uh, where did my music go? There it is. Is it going to come back? Mm -hmm.